You know, like it or not, the hit era did have a somewhat consistent formula. You can notice it with almost every character they introduce. Very complex and hard to build models, characters that have a lot of potential, and they only use them once or twice. Fearless Freddy, Flora, Mighty Mac, Proteus, Stanley, Neville, Dennis, Hector, Molly. Actually, hold that thought, hold the last one. Now, before we get into my model of Molly, I think it's important we establish what Molly actually is. My model isn't meant to be an exact replica. I'm very much on the side of have your own ideas and let them take you where they take you. But I'm also a believer in get your facts straight and then distort them at your own leisure. So really quick, let me explain what Molly actually is. Molly is a Great Eastern Railway D56 class, or an LNER D15. Her original livery was a yellow and gold with red and gold lining, as well as yellow wheels with white rims. Altogether, a pretty complex prop, one that definitely took more than a few days to make, which again is kinda sad when you think about how little they used it. Molly would first appear in 2005, in Thomas's Milkshake Muddle, with her last appearance being a cameo in The Great Discovery, not even a talking part. And truth be told, don't take this the wrong way, I really enjoy Molly, she just isn't really anything as a character besides anxious. Almost every one of her stories involve her being embarrassed about something, feeling some sort of way that normally isn't happy, and to me it seemed like there was a lot of potential in this would-be character. I say would be because, again, she was reduced to background appearances. Despite that though, I always loved her livery, I loved the idea of her as a character, and I knew one day I would make a model of her, but little did I know how complex that would actually be. We live in the age of 3D printing, it's one of my favorite parts of modeling trains currently. So the initial plan was to find a D15 print and just turn that into Molly. Sadly though, there wasn't a whole lot to find. It seems the D15 is a bit of a niche class, and even if I did get the body, would immediately have to butcher another engine for its chassis. Yeah, this wasn't going to be an easy project to do, at least if I followed the hit era basis. If you saw my recent model update video, you may know I did not do that. So last Christmas, my grandfather gifted me with an H1. He knew this was a model I would one day modify and chokingly would call it Gordon because of that. Some of you guys may recognize this model since it was Gordon for a little bit. Admittedly, when he chokingly called it Gordon, it planted the seed in my head for it to actually be Gordon. But when I actually did it and took the time to look at it, it didn't have that Gordon feel, and admittedly didn't make the most sense for the character Gordon is. Well, for some reason after watching this, I decided to watch The Great Discovery. And who else did I catch in the background besides Molly? And then looking at her, looking back at the H1, I decided to make a different decision. And with all of that out of the way, let's jump into her build process. So to save her from being Gordon, the only thing I really had to do was get rid of the fours I had put on him. Once I had those taken off, she very quickly was primed with a Tamiya light gray. I specifically chose this lighter color since the colors going onto her would be more bright. And following that came Tamiya TS-34, a sort of toned down yellow and that was applied to the entire body and tinder. Left over from Gordon, the original chassis had been painted black, and while part of me wanted to paint her wheels yellow, I also didn't want to risk messing up the entire chassis. So instead I opted to leave her wheels black and went in with more black detailing. Things like the cab roof, the footplate, the smoke box, and this was done with apple barrel matte black. Like I mentioned in the update video, lining is something I'm kind of 50-50 on. Again, I did grow up in America, so this is a little different, but any steam engine I saw growing up didn't have lining. I feel like it's a lot to do that can ultimately end up taking away from a custom. In this case, I decided just not to, and instead she would have a more industrial look, which kind of ties into my personal idea for her, but we'll get into that later. If I wasn't gonna line her, she would need something else to make her a bit more identifiable, so I decided to throw on her weathering a bit heavier than I typically would. This was done with a mix of black weathering powder, brown panel line accent, and eventually an airbrush, but again we get to that later. Sadly for a few days Molly would stay in this state. This while I tried to figure out a face situation. Now at first for the life of me, I could not find a Molly face. Personally, I think the Trackmaster is hideous, and would rather have something with positionable eyes anyway. 
Sadly, and I hate this just as much as some of you guys will, the original plan was to use a Rebecca face and hopefully modify it to look like Molly. With major help from my friend Trainstorm, he prepped two Rebecca faces and sent them my way. Just before I painted these, however, Train Dude 456 and Thomas Modeler 1 entered the chat and basically said, no, you don't have to ruin your model, take this. And pretty soon after, this model was blessed, to say the least, with one of Thomas Modeler's classic series Molly faces. Now, I know some people like Molly's larger face more than her smaller one. Personally, I don't really care either way. I think they both scream Tim Burton for some reason. But on the chance I ever want her to wear the larger face, my good friend Project Northwestern sent me two. One that's quite a bit fatter, and the other you'll see on the actual model. The larger one sadly requires pupils, which I don't have at the moment, but the moment I do get some, I promise you'll see this face on this model too. Her eyebrows were done with a painter's pen, and her mouth filled in with apple barrel matte white. With the boiler and body being so dirty, it really didn't make sense that she had a pretty pristine black chassis. Now we talk about that airbrush bit. I decided to mix a darker, almost rust brown working its way up from the chassis to the body. In a gradient-like way, it's pretty heavy on the wheels and dies off on the step ladders. And I feel like that also helped bring things full circle. It just didn't make a lot of sense having some of her so dirty and another part so clean. And with all of that done, the only thing left was smaller details. Now, Molly does have a pretty big oil lamp. This is one of many made by Westcliff Works that looks phenomenal in 00 scale. And to kind of match the size of it, I shortened up her other lamp iron. Instead of keeping the Mach 3 links, I decided to actually give her real ones. So if she ever wants to pull a 3 link consist, she now can. And a little bit of bronze was added on the safety valve and funnel and then weathered over as well. Thankfully, with all of that done, all she needed was a coat of matte clear. Now, we know how I made this molly, why I made this molly. What is this molly? Or what do I classify it as? I really don't know, it has an industrial feel to it, but that's not what I meant to do necessarily. It's just my take on Molly, that's what I'll call it. Molly from an alternate universe. And what exactly will she do? Well, kinda like I said, in my canon, since she kinda showed up and then disappeared, to me that means she was put on a certain part of the island we don't see. One of my favorite places is the coal mines. I realize putting an Atlantic on the branch line doesn't make much sense, so maybe that branch line was rebuilt to accommodate her, maybe she works at a larger mine instead, but the general idea is she pulls coal trains in the background. She's not like James, she doesn't need the praise for the work she does. She kinda just does it and is happy to know that she's helping in some sort of way. But that said, she doesn't mind the occasional praise, and a little acknowledgement never hurts. It's more than the show ever did for her. And with that complete, we can finally get into test running. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for even more train content. There's always more stuff or customs on the way. And really quick, as always, I'd like to give a huge shout out to my patrons over on Patreon. If you want to see projects or videos early, or even get a shout out at the end of videos, be sure to check that out in the description. 
And I guess with all of that being said, thanks again for watching, guys. And hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out.